Phil White on BBC Radio Humberside. At the one o'clock, the lunchtime news now. Lara King, good afternoon. Hi, Phil, good afternoon. The main story is this lunchtime. It's claimed new mobile technology means Humberside police officers will be able to spend more time in their communities. Two men are jailed for their part in an armed robbery at a jeweller's in Beverly. And it was a big weekend for Grimsby's trio of Strictly Come Dancing stars. BBC Radio Humberside. News at one. Humberside's Police and Crime Commissioner says new mobile technology means officers will be able to spend more time in their communities. Matthew Grove hopes the tablet devices being given out later will allow them to complete paperwork without returning to police stations. Trials showed two hours per week could be saved. In this day and age, information is quite simply power, and to have police officers equipped with the right information out in the field on patrol gives them that extra edge uh, to guard us all against the criminals that are out there. And there'll be more on that with Andy Comfort after five this afternoon. Two men have been jailed for their part in an armed robbery at a jeweller's in Beverly in August 2013. Kevin Smith got 12 years and Jack O'Neill nine years. They pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit robbery after police said the pair had been watching the Guest and Phillips shop before the raid. High-value watches were taken in the robbery. A man who killed five people 36 years ago but was later released from a secure mental hospital has admitting possessing guns and making a bomb. Both cases involved disputes with his neighbours. Phil Mackey reports from Birmingham Crown Court. After a long-running row about noise, in October 1978, Barry Williams shot and killed his neighbours George and Iris Burkett, as well as their son Philip, then shot and killed Mikel and Lisa de Maria at their petrol station near Nuneaton. After pleading guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, he was sent to Broadmoor indefinitely. Despite complaints to the Home Secretary, he was released in 1994. He changed his name to Harry Street and became involved in a series of disputes with his new neighbours in Hall Green in Birmingham. Detectives discovered the weapons and the homemade bomb last October. He'll be sentenced later. Northumbria police are reinvestigating 54 complaints of rape about which detectives had concluded there was no evidence of a crime. 48 officers have been moved to other duties. The cases date back over the last three years. There needs to be a radical change of attitude if we're to tackle the problem of modern slavery. That's according to a leading academic in the study of forced labour in Hull. Dr Mick Wilkinson says more cases are appearing in our area and there aren't enough resources to currently combat the issue properly. The Grand Master's Licensing Authority, I believe that should be expanded into all areas of temporary labour and it's resources should be increased exponentially. You also need forced labour to become a policing priority in every force in the country, and sadly it's not. And thirdly, and I think this is crucial, we do need a one-off amnesty.